Good day everyone, this is uh, Chris with the Ancient Scholar and what I'd like to do today is just show you an example of a STEMI or an ST elevation myocardial infarction. Uh, if you've seen my prior 12 lead ECG or introduction to 12 lead ECG videos, you would, uh, you'd be familiar with the term acute coronary syndrome and uh, under the umbrella of an acute coronary syndrome we have three distinct uh, types, if you will. Uh, the first type is something known as unstable angina. The second type is something known as a non-STEMI or a non-ST elevation myocardial infarction. And the third type is known as a, um, a STEMI, a ST elevation myocardial infarction. And each of them are, are initially managed the same, but then when we, we start talking about more definitive management um, and certain medications, there are some differences between the, the different types of acute coronary syndromes and the the urgency by which uh, the urgency and aggressiveness by which we initially um, will um, uh, intervene. Um, what kind of intervention will initially intervene? But uh, be that as it may, I'd like to just show you, take you through the process of looking at 12 lead ECG and, and kind of making sense of it. So if you remember from my prior uh, videos, I talked about the technique that I like to use, and that is the I see all leads technique. That is I see all leads. Okay, and that is to say that I look at the inferior wall first. That's two, three, an augmented vector front. That's the right coronary artery and that looks primarily at the inferior wall of the left ventricle, um, the right ventricle. It also uh, looks at part of the posterior wall, uh, depending on how dominant, how a right dominant the patient may be. And it also, um, uh, uh, the inferior, uh, the right coronary artery also feeds the um, SA and AV nodes. Okay, C is septal. Uh, that's V1 and V2. The septal wall is primarily fed by the left anterior descending artery. And the left anterior descending artery, of course, is a, a bifurcation off of the um, left coronary artery, the LCA. Um, but it is the LAD, or left anterior descending specifically, that feeds the septal wall. All is the anterior wall. And the LAD is the primary artery that feeds the anterior wall. And, of course, the LAD is a branch of the um, the left coronary artery as well. And those are the leads V3, V4, and then leads is the lateral wall. It's primarily the lateral wall, the left ventricle, and um, the posterior wall. And the, the amount of posterior involvement uh, depends on how right or left dominant a certain particular, a particular person uh, will be. And that includes the leads V5, V6, lead 1, and augmented vector left, AVL, okay? So those are the major leads, and of course that artery is another branch of the left coronary known as the circumflex. Okay, so that's just a quick review. So now that we're up to speed, let's go ahead and take a look at the 12 lead. This is actually a patient that I flew um, some years ago, and um, we will try to figure out what's going on with this, this particular individual. So the first thing I do is I look at, uh, I start at I, and I look at my inferior leads, and that'll be these guys here, two, three, and augmented vector front, okay? So, uh, right off the bat, we'll start, and you'll notice that there's a P wave here. There is a prolonged P to R interval, okay? Um, and this person, in fact, had a, a rather pronounced uh, first-degree heart block, um, and was uh, profoundly bradycardic. We expect that with a, an inferior wall MI because the SA and AV nodes take a hit there. So that is not unexpected. So I want to go ahead and ask what else you think you see. Well, we can certainly appreciate what's known as ST elevation. Um, if you look at where your J point should come back to the baseline, it's clearly not and you can clearly see that the T wave has merged into the QRS complex and you have significant ST elevation going on here. So it is uh, very safe to say that this person is uh, definitely having a STEMI of the inferior wall. Um, 
30 to 50 percent of all inferior wall STEMIs will present with a right ventricular infarction. It is very important that we um, pick up on the presence of a right ventricular infarction because if, if the patient is having an RVI, you will need to be very cautious about giving nitroglycerin to treat that specific person. Um, because these patients that are having RVIs are, of course, uh, have an alteration in their preload, and they're highly preload dependent. And if you give a medication like nitroglycerin that decreases preload, um, you can cause catastrophic, uh, a catastrophic drop in the uh, cardiac output for your patient. So that's clear, clearly something you don't want going on. The way that we do that is we take V4 and we move it from the um, left side of the chest to the right side of the chest, run the 12 lead again, circle V4, write an R next to it, V4R, and if there's ST elevation in V4R, that is uh, about 90% sensitive and 90% specific to the presence of an RVI. Okay, so we'll, we'll move from I to C, and that is the septal wall, which, is, which will be leads V1 and V2 right here in the middle. And you can see that instead of ST elevation, I have rather pronounced ST depression. Um, remember, ST elevation indicates injury, and ST depression indicates ischemia, but um, sometimes you can get what's known as a reciprocal change, where if I have ST elevation in certain leads, the leads that are opposite of those certain leads, I'll have ST depression or T wave inversion. And these are known as reciprocal changes. Um, so in this case this may be a reciprocal change or in some instances um, depression of you know V1, 2, uh, even 3 or 4 can also indicate the presence of a posterior wall myocardial infarction and of course to do a posterior wall um, I would need to do a modified um, 12 lead where I move some chest leads to the back of the the chest underneath the scapula and run the 12 lead again to de detect for the presence of a um, posterior wall MI. So in, in this case I, I, I forget um, what was going on with this patient. Um, I do know that we did run a V4R. The patient had a right ventricular infarction. Um, so we ended up loading the patient with fluids. I think he ended up getting um, atropine and, and uh, as well for the bradycardia uh, again, this is, this is some time ago, so I'm not too clear on exactly what went down there. But Okay, so I would say that there are either reciprocal changes or possibly presence of a, a posterior wall MI. And then I'll move on to C, that's the, the, um, the septal wall, or um, all, excuse me, the anterior wall, which are leads V3 and V4. You can clearly see... ST elevation in these leads um, is clearly evident, so we can definitely say that um, this there is an anterior wall ST elevation MI or STEMI occurring as well. And then we'll move on to leads, the lateral wall, V5, V6, lead 1, and augmented vector left AVR we typically don't look at. So I have elevation in V5, elevation in V6, depression in AVL, and depression in lead 1. Well, I have elevation in two contiguous leads, and elevation is definitely more than 2 millimeters. So I can also say that we have a lateral wall ST elevation uh, myocardial infarction as well. Um, so this is pretty much what we would call a global myocardial infarction. This is very significant. This is a very severe myocardial infarction. I, I, if I remember correctly, this is one of the most severe MIs that we ever uh, that I've you know had to, to deal with uh, when I was flying. Clearly, this this patient was was incredibly unstable, very very compl complicated, um, complex care was involved, um, very hemodynamically unstable. Like I said, it was very it profoundly bradycardic and. Uh, required atropine, and, and I, I believe we ended up having to do transcutaneous pacing, and he even uh, uh, did fluids, and then had to um, uh, start uh, uh, vasopressors, and 
It was very complicated, and I believe the patient went in for an intervention um, you know, within uh, minutes of us arriving at the, the receiving facility. So anyway, I just wanted to take you guys through um, a 12 lead, an actual 12 lead, and interpret it. And, and this, is a, this is just one of the best 12 leads I can think of um, because it so clearly shows ST elevation and depression. And it's very easy to um, appreciate that uh, for what it is in this case. Okay, guys, I hope you enjoyed this, this video. And as always, thanks for hanging in there.